devastating fashion in like 43 seconds into the fight. Um, definitely a huge upset. So now the uh, lightweight finals are set with Rickles and Awad. Uh, like you talked about, the main event w wasn't as um, exciting as we were hoping, but the undercard. Yes. All right. Fine. Armando, you're right. It's, Armando chiming it in the lines. It stunk up the place, but some, some notes from the undercard. You were talking about all the knockouts. Former boxing star Holly Holm keeps her undefeated MMA record with a second-round stoppage of Katie Merrill. Uh, clearly outclassed her. Take note, though, she's 3-0 and as a pro, and she fights at 135. So maybe we see somebody for her, for a future opponent. Uh, Adrian Cruz defeated Neil, uh, Nick Gonzalez with a real sweet scarf hold arm lock, going old school Mark sick. Coleman that style. Was sick. And uh, one last thing: MMA veteran of ten years, twenty five pro fights, Ed West, after all of this time, finally gets his first career knockout with a beautiful head kick. Beautiful. Okay, you and I were talking about this when I was watching the fights. There was something that just hit home with me. I looked at that, and I said, where have I seen that? It was an inside leg kick jab, switch kick to the head. I said, man, how, do, how can I say that combo so fast? That's a Sean Tompkins combo. That's a Team Tompkins combo. I look over in his corner. Who coached him for this fight? Former Team Tompkins fighter, George Roop. So I think that right there was a throwback move from the arsenal of Team Tompkins, the coach smiling down from above, seeing some of his handiwork. Helping Ed West get a KO. And, and uh, yeah, and I have to say, uh, really impressive celebration Ed West had, but real <laughs> silly. He, <laughs> he was so excited, he pulled George Roop over the cage into the, onto the mat and basically had him mm -hmm. mounted and was, you know, but yeah, like. Roop's got a fight in a couple it of weeks. It was ground and pounded him. Be careful. Um, but listen, early numbers show 900,000 viewers, second highest for Bellator. Hey, things are on the move. Also, Tuesday night, we had episode six from season 17 of The Ultimate Fighter. And the upsets, they keep on coming. Tor Troing defeated by vicious knockout on the first round by Josh Saman. And I'll tell you what. When this season started, Dana White tweeted out there about a mystery beast, someone who smashes everyone he fights. He, he does it violently, and he fishes them all, finishes them all. And the fans and the media, they all started speculating, and Tor Trolling was the guy they thought was the one that would do it. We find out tonight it's not him, or Tuesday night it's not him. He gets knocked out of the competition in the first round and knocked out in the first round. Um, Mike, you were there behind the scenes. You're one of his coaches, so you, get to, you got to see a lot more than we did. But one thing we all saw was Chael pulling Tor aside, and he said, he didn't say he was perfect, but he said, hey, man, if you have a flaw, I don't know what it is. You do every every single part of MMA you do so well. For Tor to hear that going into his fight, do you think that gave him a overconfidence where he almost kind of overlooked Josh and, and didn't respect the punching power or fightability of Josh Saman? Or is this just a case of it's the fight game and sometimes you get caught? I think what it was, Chael actually being such a good coach, saw the flaw in Tor's game, the one flaw, and, and Chael stepped in and tried to help that, like he did with Uri. And, and it's, most of these guys, most of the elite athletes, physically, they're all special. It's the mental game that's the issue. And I think Coach Sonnen was trying to really help build Tor's confidence walking in, because we knew Josh was tough. You know, we thought, I mean, we know how Josh, or how tough Josh is on the ground, and, and how good his cardio is, all this stuff, but we felt Tor... Tor unleashes his game, his full game. We thought he beats Josh, uh, no problem. And, you know, you, you go out there in MMA like Tor did, and, and, and he got hung up, you know. He, he got caught with that shot, and that, that's the beauty of MMA. Let me, let me tell you something, Mike. You brought up uh, the perfect point, and I'm not saying this because you're here. Chael Sonnen has got to be the greatest coach the Ultimate Fighter has ever had. And no, hands down. Hey, I, I mean, I'm jumping on the bandwagon now. Absolutely. When you just see the way he talks to these guys, the way he is not only in the training but in the mental game and the preparation, by far, hands down, greatest coach the Ultimate Fighter has ever had. Yeah, and speaking of coaches, what was it like for you, Mike, uh, to season seven you were a contestant, and I think you actually – do you st you had the quickest knockout in, in tough history. Do you still hold that that honor? I, I, I don't know um, if if I hold that honor, but uh, you know it, it's nice to have done it one time. There's so many tough cats rolling through there now. You know tough cats. Tough I see cat. what you did there. You like that? Oh yeah, I get it. <laughs> T U F T O U G H. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> No, but going from being a contestant in season seven and a coach on season seventeen. How did that experience help you to relate to your fighters, to get them in this peak performance state of mind that you've been there and done that while dealing with such a stressful situation? You know, I think that's one of the strongest things I brought to the table um, for the coaching staff 
and for the athletes is, is I could see it from both sides. Um, so I knew what these guys were going to be going through. I knew some guy was going to have to fight four days after he actually you know fought for the first day, and then another guy was going to have to fight two or three days later. So when we broke out the training schedule, we made sure we took that into consideration. For most every other coach, every other team, they don't know that's coming. They don't see that it's a periodized cycle that we set up in the beginning, knowing that from my experience uh, as a cast member, but also the, the mental, the emotional side. I mean, these guys are in a – a lunatic house you know a, a madhouse and even though top 17 was a great season there wasn't that much chaos inside the house it's still crazy i mean you're locked in there with 15 other dudes that want to beat your ass all this pressure your family at home so that stuff we made sure as as a coaching staff and i i, I think i i tried to help that um alleviate some of the emotional issues that, that these guys were having so they could just let their physical talent go out there and, and be displayed that that's really our job my job as a coach is so i can you know uh, remove any sort of obstacle and let the athlete's true talent be able to be d displayed on fight night Awesome. We'll get back to Tough 17 talk shortly. Joining us now on MMA Fight Corner, UFC featherweight Dennis Bermudez, fresh off his fight of the night victory over Matt Grice at UFC 157. Dennis, thank you very much for coming on the show. How are you, brother? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Brother, hey, man, you went through hell and back in that fight. It was a war of attrition. He got beat up. You got beat up. How long does it take for your body to recover from a fight like that? Like, are you still smoothing out the bumps and bruises, limping around, or are you almost back to normal? Um, I'm almost back to normal now, but uh, so I flew back Sunday, and then Monday I got massage, and the lady was, like, massaging my head and stuff like that, and she was, like, going over all the bumps and bruises and stuff like that, and I didn't want to be, like, a little girl, you know, so <laughs> I wouldn't say anything, but it hurt. Hey, you know what? After a fight like that, I don't think you ever have to worry about anyone thinking of you as a little girl. <laughs> but being in a battle like that where you're tested, you're pushed to your limits, you face adversity and still have to rally back, what does that do for your confidence moving forward in your fight career? That there is like the ideal fight. You know, you really test yourself as a man and, and, and what you're capable of. Um, it definitely... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling good off that win. You know, I, I was tired, and I, I usually never get tired. Um, so, I mean, that's that's one thing. If there's anything I'm upset about, it's, it's that, is that I got a little fatigued, and, and I had to, you know, hang on to him a little bit to catch my breath. Uh, but I promise you that won't be the case in any of my fights that's coming in the future. Um, but, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm looking to fight a, a top-ten guy next. Well, you know, I know you when you, pre you when you prepare for a fight, you, you train for every possible scenario. But in camp, coming into this fight, you know, backstage warming up, did you have any inkling in your mind in regards to the battle that you were about to get in? Did you think that it was going to play out like this and be that intense? Um, one of the guys at the gym, he's kind of like my, my, my little scouter, if you will. You know, my trainer scouts my guys, and we train a certain way to, to get ready for a guy. But he's, you know, he'll let me know the guy's stats, and he's like, this is going to be the best guys you fought to date, you know? And uh, going, and then with that being said, I was like, all right, let's rock and roll. And uh, Matt Grice being a wrestler, and I like to throw hands, I was like, that's, that's like me. I'm fighting myself pretty much. You know, he's a, he's a, a very decorated wrestler um, with, you know, good hands. So I knew it wasn't going to be a wrestling match. I knew it was going to be a slugfest, and I, 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 I prepared myself for that. You know, I hit myself harder than hopefully he hit me in the back to get ready for it. Yeah, no doubt. Joining us on the line, UFC featherweight Dennis Bermudez. Phil, what do you got for Dennis? Well, they said, like, listen, Dennis, first off, congratulations on the win, and thank you. Thank you for that fight. That's, you know, <laughs> that seriously, it changed the entire the entire complexion of the night. You really saw yeah, it because was, there was so much on that night, and there was so many eyes viewing it. Um, have you had a self, yourself a chance to watch the fight yet? Yeah, I've watched it uh, twice. Twice? Um, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been getting a lot of tweets about, like, uh, you know, Dennis, thanks for that fight. That was, like, you re you reawakened uh, uh, MMA, you know, because, you know, I mean, MMA is, is it's a, uh, you know, all year round thing, and, and, you know, guys go in there and try and pace themselves at times. Um, you know, I get in there, I try and mix it up and just, and just get after it right away, uh, you know. But, but like you said, thank you. Like, I had a lot of guys tweeting me and, and like, thank you. Like, I was getting, I was starting to get bored with MMA or or that was the best fight I've seen ever or, or in a long time. So it's, it's an honor to be recognized like that. Well, it's clearly my running for fight of the year so far. Uh, did you and Matt talk after the fight? Yeah, Matt is actually one of the coolest uh, 
a poet I've ever talked to after a fight. He's you know really down to earth and and uh, I really we did all of our our post press conference together. We just kind of they kind of took us around and we did an interview together and we got to fish stuff together as well. Yeah, you, cool. yeah, you can pretty much say you guys are going to be friends for life. I mean, when you go to hell and back with somebody, you, you know, that that's a yeah, bond like, you build. Like blood brothers. It's like the Mickey Ward Arturo Gotti. Like, these guys go to war and they become best friends. Right. Yeah. And now, before the event took place last week, uh, Dana, you know, ma- made the media rounds. And uh, he had made a statement talking about the UFC trimming their roster by 100 fighters. Was that at all in the back of your head going into the cage that night? Um, yes and no, uh, because originally they wanted to put me on Facebook. And when you're in a Facebook fight, it's kind of like, you know, if you lose a Facebook fight, you're, you know, a lot, like, you know, I don't know, a lot of times you're, you're then out if you lose, you know. So I wasn't sure if that was the case. Uh, then I got moved up to, um, you know, prime time, which was awesome. Um, and, uh, I said to Matt before at my weigh-in, I said, let's, let's make history, man. And, uh. And, you know, so we went out there, we, we, we put our balls off. So, uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of being cut and, and that on my mind, I, I try not to let it sink in too much, you know. I just know if I go out there and keep moving and, 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 and fight my fight, that it'd be, the UFC would be crazy to cut me. Yeah, I think pretty much the uh, consensus on Twitter was that afterwards, that, well, these two guys still have a job. That's, that's definitely a fact. Um, earlier this week, you said you tweeted out a picture, and, and I found it really interesting. Where you were wearing a Normatec bodysuit. Um, yes. I- explain that to some of the people because it's one of the most interesting things I've ever seen. So the Normatec uh, machine is a machine that increases circulation, and what increase in circulation increases recovery rates, and and um, and so, so it's pretty much there's there's five chambers. There's there's arms, there's legs. I use the legs most of the time. There's five chambers that go up your leg, and it works. It feels like uh, like when you get your um, blood pressure taken, and they squeeze your arm real tight to get a pulse. It's like that, and it just moves up your leg, and just so one chamber will go, fill up, let go a little bit, squeeze tight, let go a little bit, and then that chamber will release, and the next chamber will go. So it's just uh, you know flushing out your legs, and it, it's great for for recovery. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting machine, and, and you've seen that. You know, it's kind of like a joke with the $6 million man. You know, we can make you f- bigger, faster, stronger. But with technology today, I mean, that's going about it the right way instead of the cheating way. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I agree. Hey, Dennis, uh, you're about to be, you're about to have another, uh, 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 your first kid, correct? Yes. Awesome! Congratulations. Yeah, rodeo, but yes, this will be my first actual kid. <laughs> no, I, I, no, I remember uh, now. Uh, uh, I remember in season or when the the Ultimate Fighter when you were on there, there was you were telling a story, a, a discrepancy where you were with a girl, um, you thought it was your child, then it turns out after you started to raise it that it wasn't. Um, yeah, after two years, yeah. Wow. And so, what's that like now? And I don't want to get too too heavy on you, or too deep, but to you know, go from that situation. Now you're in this situation where it's it's yours and you're happy. But is there anything in the back of your mind where you're just kind of worried, or or is this just like that was a lesson learned, and now I'm ready to experience you know fatherhood for reals for the first time? Yeah. Um. I mean, that that happened in my life. I mean, it's not. I mean, it was definitely, you know, uh, a huge event in my life that happened. But, I mean, I, I think it really tested me as a man. You know, it really, I stepped up. I, I did what I thought I had to do. Um, I, you know, worked two times. It just, it's just really a, 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 a huge test to me in, in my life. And, you know, being able to overcome it and, and stuff like that. And, and uh, you know, a lot, I've talked to a lot of people. Like, I would have killed her. I would have, you know, I would have broke. I would have, you know, a lot of people wouldn't be able to handle that. And, and you know, being mentally strong is is the way I was raised. So I was able to overcome and just and just focus on the positive things that were going on in my life. Well, awesome, man. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you made the best out of a, of a bad situation. And, and congratulations on the amazing win. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview. Before you go, do you want to plug any sponsors or shout out your Twitter? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, shout out to Normatech. Shout out to uh, Titan Body Wash. Shout out to... I am boosted. They got the gear. And uh, if, if you're on Long Island and you need a car, go to Security Dodge in, uh, in Amityville and uh, Cage Fitness. My old, my old stomping grounds. Amityville. Yeah. Yeah, I lived in Amityville. And you can uh, follow me on Twitter at Menace Bermudez.
Awesome, awesome. Best of luck, brother. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Take care. Yeah. Class I'm act. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Well, look, we got to pay some bills. But when we get back, we'll have more with Mike Dolce. Breakdown UFC on Fuel 8. We'll get Heidi's hit list and more. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. The MMA Fight Corner. Your friends at Tender Dental want to remind you that your dental insurance is probably renewed. So don't put yours or your family's dental needs on hold any longer. Call Tender Dental today at 329-0828. There's three convenient locations, Summerlin, Northeast, and Boulder Highway. You'll meet with a friendly, knowledgeable staff to treat children of all ages and adults. Tender Dental, cosmetic, family, and sleep dentistry, 329-0828. Open evening Saturdays and Sundays. Call 329-0828. Each year, there's one weekend that NASCAR fans in Las Vegas circle on their calendars. It's March 8th through 10th when NASCAR returns to the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Tony Stewart and Jimmy Johnson are already texting about it. Jimmy, winning Vegas was great. I think I'll do it again. Dude, I've won four of them. How are you going to beat me? It wasn't too hard last year. March 8th through 10th, NASCAR returns to Las Vegas. Call 644-4444 or visit LVMS.com today for your weekend package. Hey, this is Nyth, the computer girl from PC Laptops. It's our ultra mega 2013 super amazing we love you sale. We have hundreds of thousands of dollars of amazing laptops and desktops on sale for up to 50% off the original prices. We've got demos, open box, scratch and dents. It's crazy. Remember, you get a lifetime service guarantee on any of our computers. The cool thing is we will buy your old computer from you no matter what brand it is and transfer for all of your stuff to your new PC Laptops computer for free. The sale only happens once a year. To make it impossible to resist, I'm throwing in your choice of zero down, zero interest for a year financing, OAC, minimum payment required, or 90 days same as cash. No credit check financing. Your job is your credit. Call us at 1-877-596-SAVE or check us out at PCLaptops.com. That's PCLaptops.com because at PC Laptops, we love Love you. Hi, this is Billy Muir from the MMA Fight Corner Radio Show here on Fox Sports Radio. And I want to tell you about a great gym right here in Vegas that is helping me get into way better shape while teaching me to protect myself like an MMA fighter, even though I have no plans of ever stepping inside the cage. Extreme Couture helps me and plenty of other men, women, and children get into better shape while having a great time in a family atmosphere with coaches leading classes who really care about me. Where else can you go and see world-class athletes like Randy Couture and a host of other UFC fighters training? Nowhere. So whether you're someone who just wants to compete or get in shape learn boxing kickboxing wrestling grappling jujitsu oh and i almost forgot they have great kid classes as well extreme couture is the place for you no matter what skill level you're at trust me i know it helped me get my butt right back into shape call and visit this state-of-the-art facility today call 702-616-1022 that number again is 702-616-1022 you'll be glad you did i know i was what's up fight fans wondering where to go when the mma fight corner is not airing on fox sports radio or fox 5 tv Go to MMAFightCorner.com for all the latest MMA news and gossip and the most exclusive interviews anywhere with your favorite fighters. That's MMAFightCorner.com, your all-access pass to everything MMA. Stop! Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans, where they're offering a 9.95% rate. While everyone else is paying up to 24% on their title loans, you can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685-4100. That's 685-4100. Come on, come on, come on. JT the Brick with Tom Looney. We got to get started, started, started. Looney and I have been saying for years, since going back to the caveman times, it is okay for grown men to push and shove oh, and yeah, sure. even fight. That's as right. long as they don't have weapons, Looney. Guns and knives, bazookas. Whatever it is, grown men are allowed to push and shove in NBA games before they put fight and brawl on the scroll tonight. I'm looking up, fight and brawl. I was expecting a fight and a brawl with just a little pushing and shoving. That's all it was, really. Curry got thrown around a little bit, but he's a little bit of fella. 
little, 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 little guy. A little bit of fella. So he got thrown around a little bit, but hey, they mixed it up. Now they're bumping ass, as Bill Russell used to say on CBS. Hey, I'll tell you this much. When you look at the way the Pacers are playing, they want to be invited to the park. What you trying to do? This is JT the Brick with Tom Looney. JT the Brick. Overnights from 10 to 3 on Fox Sports Radio 920. This is Matt Hughes, and you listen to the MMA Fight Corner. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. I'm Joey Varner, joined by Billy Mira, Phil Devine, Heidi Fang, special in-studio guest host, Mike Dolce. What's up, Joey? Do me a favor. Let me get a, a, a patent-pending trademark official Mike Dolce. Boom. Boom. That's what's up. Mike Dolce, one of the top nutritionist, strength and conditioning coach, not just in mixed martial arts, but in the world. Work with the likes of Vitor Belfort, Tiago Alves, uh, uh, Chael Sonnen. He's a coach on this season of The Ultimate Fighter. He's a best-selling author. Um, just started doing an amazing podcast, by the way. Can you, you know, Thank I've you. never complained for, 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 for content. And I always want more, but I can't keep up, man. How many a week are you doing? Right now, it, it is two a week right now. Because I'm on eight, and it seems like every day I come on there to, to catch up, but I don't get to do the whole thing at once. Like, I listen to 15 minutes, and then 15, and I kind of incrementally listen to them. But every time I come to finish, one, like there's five more. They're like, they're like the gremlins. You add water on them, and they grow. That's right. That's the plan. We're just trying to keep coming out with consistent content that's usable, that's entertaining, and uh, hopefully we're, we're able to share some information. So we're having a lot of fun with it, we're, and we're still learning. Dude, speaking of learning, I, I, every time I go on there, I learn something new. I, I have fun. I said the gremlin joke, yeah. but if gremlins were a good thing, because it's good that they're multiplying, it's more knowledge for me, and, and I love it. You bring personality, you have fun while you're doing it, and it's it's so insightful. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. And what I'm trying to do is we we started the, the podcast based upon my Twitter Q&A. Every Sunday I do a QA and a on Twitter. One Sunday I answered over 800 freaking questions. Type it on my little BlackBerry Curve keyboard. And uh, from, from that point on, I said it'd be better if I could go deeper with these replies instead of the 140 minus restating the question, you know, characters on Twitter. And that's where we, we did a few YouTube Q&As. We got a good response. We figured it's easy to put it up for free for everybody on iTunes and Stitcher. We did that, and, uh, you know, we're, we're doing pretty good now. We're having fun with it. Rolling. Yeah, it's it's funny how Joey talks about all of the guys that you that you've worked with, but it's it's really funny to see at weigh-ins usually the opponent of the guy you're working with has come up to you and he's like, dude, how'd you do that to him? Yeah. You know, Tiago Alves for the longest time had trouble with weight, and now you've got him down like t- down to the queue. Absolutely. Now it is it's easy. I think he cut four pounds on uh, uh, weigh-in day when he fought Campman his last fight, and that was easy. I mean, he was 177 the night before, fully fed. You know, and that's something that he's never had, never seen in his career. So what we're trying to do, I'm just trying to help these guys stay healthy. And again, just let them uh, display their full potential come fight night. And they can only do that if they are healthy, which is the opposite of what a, a, lot, of, a lot of the other guys do. Yeah, because for years they talked about with wrestlers and wrestlers, yeah. the way they cut weight, how unhealthy it was and the, the, the long-term damage it would do to your body. But the way you have it down to... to to the science, which is is really interesting because Joey talks about, you know, the entertainment value in your podcast, but it becomes because of your passion for nutrition. Where did you develop that passion? Like, how did it come about? Because there are people out there who are like, yeah, yeah, you know, I try to stay healthy, but you take it to another level. I, I appreciate that. And it really has been a lifelong pursuit. I started wrestling at 12 years old um, and cutting weight immediately at 12. I was a freshman, freshman captain of my varsity wrestling team in high school, and I was pretty much in charge uh, uh, of the weight cuts, of the strength and conditioning. I was just, you know, if, if you know my backstory, you'll know a little bit more about that. I was switched on to it. I, I was that dude. Um, and then, you know, moving on, I, so I blow up my shoulder. I lose my scholar wrestling scholarship. I start powerlifting as a, as a means to rehab my shoulder. I go through rehab, then I start powerlifting so I can stay competitive. I can't wrestle and do all that stuff. Again, another weight class dominated sport, but now focused on, on the power, the single rep, you know, the explosive burst. Um, from there, and, and then I did 10 years like that, and then I get into MMA in 2002 with Henzo Gracie and Team Henzo Gracie, guys like Kurt Pellegrino when he was fighting in the ring of combat and Dante Rivera. I mean, really old school when it was still NHB days. I was working as a coach uh, with, with these guys, and what I did is I, I kind of blended all, all the techniques, all the experiences that I had, and then, you know, education and things that, that's mixed in, but it, it's really the um, in-the-trenches experience, and I also have the experience of working with elite athletes 
pretty much every every week, every Friday and Saturday night. You know, and I go from Vitor Belfort to Tiago Alves to Gray Maynard to Chael Sonnen to Johnny Hendricks to Jay Heron to Mike Pyle over and over and over and over and over again. And I'm constantly refining and learning and evolving my techniques. What works? You know, what work th- works on a specific uh, individual and what works kind of globally and universally. And that's, I think, what allows me to continue pushing this forward and just helping these guys stay healthy because that's the goal. I focus on them staying healthy and the performance is short term. The weight cut becomes extremely easy. Yeah, well, results don't lie. And you follow Twitter like you talk about with you were doing the Q&As, the amount of people that this the, the Dolce diet has changed their lives. It, it's remarkable. Congratulations to you. Yeah, all the, all the best, brother. And let's put some of that knowledge to our good right now. It is time for the breakdown. Breakdown. Go ahead. Give it to me. UFC on Fuel 8 taking place this Saturday at the Tokyo Japan Saitama Super Arena. Facebook prelims starting at 4.30. Main card starts at 7. That's on the West Coast. It's 7 to 10 on the East Coast. Main event, of course, Brian Stan moving back up to light heavyweight to take on the Axe Murderer. He's not Japanese. He might as well be Japanese. If you act, walk down the street and you ask people what's the UFC, they might not know. You ask them who Vanderlei Silva is Japan, and they go wide-eyed, which <laughs> no, no, no racial joke. Intended no. There. <laughs> <laughs> no joke intended there. But uh, that is the main event of the evening. And this fight is actually taking at 2 o- They're both moving back to 205. So it's going to be interesting. Let's start at the bottom of the card, work our way up. First fight in the welterweight division. Dong Young Kim taking on CR. Bad Haduzara. Yeah. Say that 10 <laughs> times fast. And, uh, uh, Mike, you want to go ahead and bat lead off on this one? Give us your breakdown how you see the fight going. You know, I, I know Sire's a real tough guy. Him and Tiago Alves, one of my athletes, have been circling each other for a while now. So I, I did my research on him. I like Sire. I like his style. He's a move-forward kind of fighter. He's always looking for the finish. Um, where Kim is always looking for the finish also, but he goes about it differently. Kim is much more of a, a grappler. He wants to get his hands on you, smother you, get you down to the ground, and choke the life out of you. I take. Uh, I think Sire is going to step in and do it. And and, uh, you know, ho- hopefully he does because hopefully he, he and Tiago meet up some point maybe at the end of this year. Yeah, that's the fight you want? I would love now, that. Now, is it Sire or CR? I thought I thought Goldie was saying CR. But Phil, what did you hear? It's Sire, oh, no. I believe. Sire. It's so it's a little, it's a combination of the both? Yeah. Sire. Yeah. So, yeah, Sire. And, dude, he, like, you're completely correct, Mike. He's a dangerous man. One of the only guys to actually come into the UFC and live up to the hype Absolutely. that surrounded him. You know, he's another guy that he's had some visa issues in the past. Um, but uh, great stand-up fighter. It, against Kim. Kim's a big welterweight. He's a tough dude, got great judo. I'm looking forward to this fight. I got to lead to Sayer, though. I think that, I, I really do. I think that, you know, that, that hype it is for real. I think he is that good of a fighter. And he needs to win because that Black Zillion team right now, they need a win bad. And if anyone can do it, I think it's Zaire. Didn't you tell me last week that that you would not pick someone from Black Zillions right now because of how much they've been losing? Yeah, if you look, it, it's... It but you're really going back is, on that. I, I am going back okay. on this because I, I look at Zaire and I think he's the guy that's going to get it done for them. I think he's going to change the mentality of the camp with a big win tomorrow night. Heidi, give me, what do you, what do you guys think? Heidi Armando, just give me your... Everyone is this Sayer across the board? Am I the am I the black sheep of the family? Uh, I, I I like Sayer. I think he's very dangerous. I think he's explosive. He's aggressive, but I think he's also kind of reckless and sloppy. And he's been effective yeah. with his aggression. Yeah. You with me? Ah, Armando Marcarnal. Yeah, he's 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 very aggressive, but he is reckless. You know, he 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 throws just these sloppy sloppy punches. I haven't really seen him tested. I think he does have a chance of catching Kim. That is a potential, but I just think Kim is so long. He uses his range very well. He boxes at a distance, and his greatest strength is his grappling, his ability, his judo, his ability to take people down, control the top position, and that is the biggest weakness of Sayer. So I- I'm going with Kim on this one. Well, if you remember Kim in his last fight, he looked both of them actually coming off of destructions of Paulo, Paulo Tiago, Tiago, just different ways. Sayer exactly. knocked him out in the first round. I think it was like 40 seconds yep. in. But Kim just big brothered him. He John Fitched him the whole fight. In fact, actually, it was really exciting. Remember at the end, he kind of like soccer robbed him. Yeah. He went all wild and nuts. It was, you know, he looked very... Very, very good. The le- both guys look good. It's one of those rare instances where you have two guys on such a good streak, all right, that look good. Because Kim, you know, he lost to um, Damian Maya, but that was a rib injury. He had that bad spasm kind of in the middle, fluke. so it was a fluke. And, and before that, it was the Carlos Conda, but, but, you know, it was the one time he got caught. It's the first time he's ever been knocked out. 
first and only. And, and uh, against a guy like Carlos Condit, you know, number three welterweight in the world, former former title challenger, the way he got caught with a flying knee. I Beautiful. Mean, Highlight reel. Yeah, if your name's not Carlos Condit, I don't see you landing that same move on him. So we've got the whole team, except for myself, choosing CR. I'm going with uh, Stun Gun Kim in this one. Uh, next bout in the featherweight division, Mizuto Hiroto taking on Ronnie, Ronnie Yaha. Ra Yaya. I said Yaya. You said Yaha, but I know no, it's, it's Yaya. Yaya. Oh, you said Yaha. No, last no, night. it's Yaya. Are oh, you Ra messing with me? Ra Ronnie Yaya. Because I, I cornered Mark Holmanick <laughs> against him, and last night we're on the phone, and I said Yaya, and Phil says Yaha. No, Yaya. Yeah, yeah. Are you messing with Yaya. me? Yaya. Yaya. All right. Ronnie Yaya. Ronnie Yaya, Abu Dhabi champ, uh, amazing grappler. Uh, his striking has evolved. Uh, I'll take point on this one. Uh, Hirota, he's, he's a solid striker. He's got. Good wrestling. He's good everywhere, not great anywhere. I think that uh, Yaya's striking has gotten better. He's ballsy. Remember his loss to Jay-Z? He came out swinging, going nuts. It, it, it was impressive. I think he's evolved. I think his striking has gotten to the point where he can make a fight on the feet with Hiroto, Hiroto which will open up the ground game where he, I think he'll just, just mop the mat. Yeah, you talk about Yaya's uh, credentials. He's got like, with his grappling credentials are like a Kennedy portfolio. Huh. Like, top, <laughs> like top of the line. He is, you know, second degree black belt, such slick submissions. I think he's got 17 wins, 15 of them, you know, are by submission. Uh, you know, his boxing has come along. Uh, Hiroto, I think mostly people remember him for the Shinya Aoki arm break yeah, where nasty. he stood yeah. over him and flipped him off afterwards. But uh, he looked real good. Up until it, that point. It, and then in his last fight, uh, he, he fought in strike force. He fought Pat Healy. A lot of people in that, you know, watching that fight thought he may have won and that it shouldn't have gone to Healy. Healy's a tough dude. You know what he can do. Um, but I think it is the submission skills that's going to take this fight. I think, yeah, yeah, he's too good. He's like a Damian Maya. He eats black belts for breakfast. So I think Yaya's yeah, yeah, got this one. Mike? You know, I I'm going to lean towards Yaya yeah, uh, also, just based on who he's fought recently and who he's beat recently uh, compared to Hirota, who, yeah, he did fight Healy. And, I mean, Healy's super tough. I'm buddies with Pat. I know how tough he is. So if you're hanging in there with Pat Healy, you're a tough dude yourself. But Yaya, yeah, yeah, I mean, he's got a win over Josh Grisby, who used to be, you know, a phenom, used to be a superstar. He's got a win over Mike Brown uh, not too long ago, and he's got a decision loss to Chad Mendes. So he's been fighting guys that are, you know, top of the game at one time, have been considered in, in uh, you know, title contention. So I, I think Yaya's uh, going to go. It's weird to say that name, huh? It is. It Every is. time I say it, remember that little Buster Rhyme song? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that's what I want to say. Yeah, I feel like uh, I, don't know, I feel like I shouldn't be saying it. But yeah, I'm yeah. going to go with yeah, yeah on that <laughs> yeah. one. Heidi, what do you think? Yaya yeah, yeah, across the board. Yaya yeah, yeah, it is. Armando in the house. Next up in the middleweight division, judo specialist, knockout artist, Hector Lombard talk, taking on the striker turned wrestler, Yushin Okami, one of the biggest mid middleweights in the game. Phil, I know you're a diehard Lombard fan. Why don't you bat lead off on this well, one? I got to say, Lombard definitely re redeemed himself after the uh, Tim Boach fight uh, by destroying uh, Jose Marpalleras in the first round. Knock knocked him down like three or four times before he finally finished him. Really, man handled him. Dude's won 21 of 22 fights. He's got like was it like 17, 18 knockouts, 19 knockouts and then most of them are in the first round. Uh and Okami, you know, the most successful, let's be honest, the most successful Japanese fighter to make a transition into the UFC. Absolutely. I think this is what his 17th UFC fight, 12 and 4. He's only lost to the best of the best in the division. Um he he's looked good since his last two lost he he had lost to Boach obviously, but that was the come from behind you know, that he let it slip away. I think he was just too gassed. Punched himself yeah, out. Yeah. yeah, in Japan, which was very odd, absolutely. Um, That's right, I forgot it was in Japan. Yeah, um, but he's got excellent judo and great ground and pound, and I think that's the real interesting part of this fight. He's got two uh, judo black belts with two totally different body styles. You know, Okami's tall, lean, a big middleweight, uh, and um, uh, Lombard is like a short, stocky, like could be a 205 with all the muscle he has. You know, so I'm, I, I want to see where that's going to play and how angles and how hips are going to work in this fight. It are in the in the tangle up. Is Okami going to be able to take him down or is Lombard going to be able to take him down? I want to see how that's going to go because this fight really depends on where it takes place. On the feet, I got Lombard all day. Really? Yeah, on the feet, I got Lombard all day. In the clinch, that's tough. That's tough because Lombard has gassed before. And, you know, like, you know, Dolce knows... You, with all that muscle, 
You need a lot of oxygen to, you know, to, to fill those those veins going. So it's going to be tough. I think this, but I think he handles it, and I think he does it early, and, and he finishes Okami. Wow, Mike, how do you see it? You know, I, I know both guys pretty well. I have trained alongside Lombard, working with uh, Tiago Alves down in the American Top Team in, in Florida, and uh, Okami's part of uh, Chael's team, Team Son, and I'm one of Chael's coaches. So um, I have a pretty good insight, and it, it's a really tough tough fight to pick. You know, Hector is so versatile. I, I've seen his grappling. I've seen his judo. I've seen his takedown defense, and I've seen his devastating hands. We've all seen that stuff. Hector can get in on, inside on anybody, and he's explosive. He's like Mike Tyson in his prime. He has that type of fast twitch speed. He can step inside Okami and hurt him bad. Okami is plotting with his striking. He's uh, striking. He's very technical. He's long. He uses his reach rather well, but it's really to close distance and, and to get his hands on you. So if Okami can do that, if he can close distance, get his hands on Hector, uh, like Phil says, and kind of slow Hector down, drag him in the deep waters, then it's Okami all day. I think Hector's going to step inside, hurt Okami, and he's been hurt. He's proven that he can get hurt, and uh, you know he, he doesn't react too well once he gets, uh, you know, landed on. Um, so I'm going to say, you know, it's good, it breaks my heart, but I'm, I'm going to say I, I think Lombard's going to take it. Well, I'm kind of going with everything you said, but going the opposite direction. You know, you guys both talked about Okami using his length and his reach to close the distance, but what stands out most in my head was his ability to use that length and his reach to keep Tim Boach at bay. He fired he straight jabs, long ones and twos, really controlling the distance between himself and Boach and made it a long-distance striking fight. Um, I think Lombard is a lot shorter than Boach. Now, granted, Okami did get knocked out in that fight, but I don't think he got knocked out because he was he his, it was a chin issue. I think it was a fatigue issue. I think he punched himself out. He was gassed out, and he looked across, and he saw this guy. Oh, my God, he's still there, you know. He didn't have anything left. So I think the knockout was partially power, partially fatigue and I think it was a greater in greater part due to the fatigue than the power that being said I I, I don't know that Lombard will be able to get past that long long range and if he does if if Okami as he closed the distance doesn't just close it as well and go into that tie-up game you know I think he will be the bigger and the stronger too but I see Okami staying long staying long you know keeping it far range and then closing the distance maybe get him against the fence and just dirty boxing against the fence. So I'm going with Yushin Okami in this one. Um, are you are you a movie fan? Me? Yeah. Of course. You like Pulp Fiction? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Hector Lombard carries the same wallet as Jules Winfield. Just so you know. The one that says, bad mother... Yeah, yeah, you know, that one. So does your girl, actually. Yeah, actually, she does. So your girl has that wallet, actually. Heidi does. That's kind of... You got to worry about a girl that's why... I'm like, okay, I'm not messing with you. <laughs> nah, he's a... He's a yeah, it, it's an interesting fight. I, it, I'm just not sold. I haven't been. I never have. And uh, I, I want to see more. I'm not on the Hector hype train yet. I don't know that I've seen enough out of him that I believe enough. When I look at his record, who he's beat, he's beat some okay guys, but no one really stands out as, wow, he really beat some top guys and the, his losses come to guys who are kind of at that next tier that upper echelon you know the gay guard musasis so i just don't know that that lombard is what everyone has hyped him up to be you know i don't know if he's like um you know he's he's, he's a one-trick pony he's phenomenal in one thing but he's easy to figure out and he'll break if if you push him never been knocked out never been submitted all right joey on tuesday prepare to hop on board the hype train. The hype train. It's gonna. Okay, I'll tell you this way. Okay, okay, okay. It, it's gonna take more than a victory over you. Should do it. He'll have to do it in some seriously. Like it's gonna have to be Mike Tyson asking for me to say, "Okay, I'm a believer." Yeah. Well, what the what the word is at American Top Team on Hector? He got used to beating guys so easily. He didn't train as hard when he walked in and fought Tim Bosch and got beat. That woke the monster up inside Hector Lombard. Now I saw it in the gym. I saw the way he did train. You can tell he's you know so athletically talented. Didn't really push that hard. Once Bosch beat him, he went back to the gym. He apologized to his teammates. He apologized to his coaches, and he said, "I'm here to be serious. I'm here to be a world champion." And he really turned his training up. Became a. He used to be a selfish training partner. He became a much better training partner, a much more coachable athlete. And any human that does that, that says, "You know what? I was going the wrong way, and I'm going to make decisions and changes in my life to try and go to the right way." I'm assuming Hector's going to bring the most of his athletic potential uh, to Japan on Saturday night, and, and that's why I think he's going to be able to just use that ex that speed, that that, 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 that leverage and get inside on Okami. But, man, it's Yushin Okami. Like you said, the most successful Japanese fighter to step into the UFC. And he, he really doesn't lose that, lose that often, right? Only to the best, but a motivated Hector Lombard is a scary Hector Lombard.
Look, I would rather be wrong and impressed and excited than be right and bored. So like I'm sticking that. with there Okami, but I hope you guys are right. Uh, in the lightweight division, Diego Sanchez dropping back down to 155. Returned to his roots with Yoda, Greg Jackson, taking on the fireball kid, Takanori Gomi, at one point who was arguably the best lightweight in the world, who has faltered every time he's fought in the United States but seems to rise to the occasion in Japan. Will he be able to rise to this occasion against the nightmare Diego Sanchez? Or is he the yes man now? What's his, what's he, his no, new nickname? He's the dream. The and dream. that is the That's, worst yeah. thing. When you have Terrible. a nickname. The nightmare you, was awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah your yeah. nickname is. That's like yeah. straight up I'm killer. The dream. Yep. And now you're the dream. And then it all. But this is Diego's first time back at lightweight since he, he got stopped by BJ Penn. Yeah. Which, if you remember, it wasn't a stoppage like he got knocked out. It was a cut. It was a bad cut. He's never been uh, submitted. It was a beatdown, though. It was a beatdown. Yeah. But the chin he's got, remember, BJ dropped him yeah. in the first six seconds, and he hopped right back up. He, he, he's got. A, he's a tough fighter. Uh, last three fights, fight of the night. Gomi's last fight, fight of the night. Yep. Just expect a fun, fun fight. It may go the distance, and if it does, they're going to be the most entertaining 15 minutes you'll see in a long time. Who are you picking? I'm, I'm going to have to go with... See, this is the tough one here. Like, I want to say, because the, the interesting question is, Diego Sanchez, can he make a mark, a return yeah. to top contention at 155? Gomi, is he going to be the token guy or the, the guy that they use for the international shows, for the fights in Japan, for the fights in China? I don't know. Um... I'll go with Diego taking this one by decision. Yeah, with me as well. Uh, I think I'd be a fool not to pick Diego. Uh, uh, Gomi hasn't looked sharp against other southpaws. Kenny Florian, uh, um, Nick Diaz. You know, he did look sharp against Nick Diaz, actually, but but in a losing performance. But he's, he's lost against other southpaws. Florian picked him apart. Um, but I'll tell you what. If I had some money to burn, you know, I would throw down 20 on Gomi because he is the dog. It is in Japan. And he does have that fireball kid mystique. Uh, the same way that B.J. Penn was, w like, Diego's a, an okay striker, but B.J. Penn was at the next level. He was sharper. He was able to pick apart every single mistake and capitalize on that. And I think the same holds true for Gomi in the striking department here. I think he's superior in the striking arts. Sharper. And, uh, sharper, yes. And I think he can pick apart the holes in his game, but, I j but I'm not going to bet against Diego. I, I think he can take him down, ground and pound him, control him. He's new weight class, motivated. With Greg Jackson, I'm going Diego, Mike. I'm going Gomi. I'm going Gomi. If I looked on paper, I, I'd go with Diego. But I'm going with Gomi because Gomi's talking about making a title run, and Diego's talking about retiring. Boom. I Boom. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you get inside the head, the lifestyle. I mean, this is how you you, know, you kind of make fights, right? You pick fights, you know, bookies and, and things like that. You think about what's going on. You know, did he have his magic shoelaces in the locker room today? You know, that, right. there, that can swing a fight or a game. Well, that, I mean, that's what these guys are talking about. Gomi's talking about putting together a title run. Diego's, you know, looking at the end of the road. So maybe Diego wants to go out in a blaze of glory. But I think Gomi fighting over in Japan at 155, which is Gomi's natural weight class. Diego's now is trying to make that drop all the way back down again after a long layoff, coming off some injuries and some surgeries. Ring rust is certainly a bitch. You know, we've seen it before. Pardon my using of that term. But ring rust, you know, will, will ruin a, a world class performance. Um, I'm going Gomi. Especially overseas, having to travel for your first time back, go to a, so yep. it's a it's a whole different time zone, ten hour, twelve hour distant almost, or are, are different. So yeah, that's tough. Ha Heidi, how about you? Diego. So Diego's across the board. Dolce says Gomi. I say, though, if you want to have some fun, money to burn, I'd throw it on Gomi. I, I, I can see him doing it. So, um, hey, he's, he's won two in a row for the first time since coming back to the, since and coming now to he's, the UFC. And now he's in Japan. Yeah, and, yeah so it, this is an interesting fight. can happen either way. Definitely. Uh, light... Or excuse me, co-main event of the evening, the skyscraper, seven foot tall, Stefan Strube taking on former K1 Grand Prix heavyweight champ, pride veteran, Mark Hunt. I love this one. I'll take bat on this. And I, and I think this is kind of similar in my in my eyes to how I was judging the LeVar Johnson, mm -hmm. Brendan Shaw fight. Yeah. It's like, is the chin of one guy better or worse than the ability of the other gentleman to defend against the takedown and keep the fight standing? And in that fight, I picked Shaw. I thought his wrestling was better than 
than uh, his, you know, I thought he could wrestle, out wrestle LeVar Johnson. In this fight, I think it's opposite. I think Struve doesn't have much of an offensive wrestling game. I think Hunt is so short and stocky, it's hard to get him down. Um, I also don't like the fact, I do like it, but I don't like the fact that Struve has talked about working on a striking game and using his range and trying to fight, find his length. And, and I like hearing a fighter knowing how to use their weapons and how to use their strength and evolving. What concerns me, though, is that he's doing it in this fight against this guy. Hmm. It's, like, it's like I'm a grappler and I'm feeling confident in my jiu-jitsu, so I'm going to test it out against Damian Maya. You know, it's not. This isn't the spot to do it. It's not the spot to go out when you have a, te- a chin that has been touched, when you have been put unconscious on numerous occasions, to go out and try to use your striking against this guy. So if that is his game plan, I don't think it's going to work. I think Mark, Mark Hunt will be able to touch his chin, knock him unconscious. Uh, I am picking Hunt. I'm a little worried about Hunt at that, though. He did say a couple things in interviews that have me kind of worried. He talked about his strength and conditioning routine. He said he really wants to hit hard, so he's doing a lot of power lifting. And for mixed martial arts, Mike, you know better than I, I don't think that's the best thing that you should be doing as a strength and conditioning regiment to get ready for a fight. He also talked about having to cut weight to get to this fight. And the way he talked about cutting weight, and Mike, everything, I defer to you as this because everything I know about it, I pretty much learned from you. But uh, he talked about, you know, it's been four weeks with no carbs and he's delirious. And, uh, and I don't know if he's lying, if he's just selling that. But if, if, he, if that is the truth... He's not going to be in peak performance. That being said, I still think stylistically it's a better fight for him. I just didn't like hearing that. It, yeah, it goes, it goes down like this. If Struve stands with Hunt, Struve won't be standing long. Huh. Okay? But you got to you gotta look at the it's, – it's, if he takes him down, Struve's a submission whiz. And if he can get him down, Hunt can't do anything on the ground. So that it, wherever this fight takes place is where this fight is won. Got to expedite this. Who's your pick? I'm going to go with Struve. Struve. Hunt, real quick, make it quick for me. Mark Hunt. Mark Hunt, okay. Armando, Hunt, Heidi? Struve. Struve, so we're split across the board here, Hunts and Struves. Mike and I went with the Hunt. Yep. They went, they're hunting Struvels. Never Struve. bet against Mark Hunt. Come on Really, now. right? Hunt. What kind of world is this? Yeah, you've only been wrong seven times. Hey. Of- <laughs> <laughs> well, you got our picks. If you like to bet, go to our website, see all the rest of our picks. We're right on par, 75%, pretty much solid. Um, so it's safe. If we have a consensus pick, it's safe to make the bet. Uh, yeah, but tomorrow night, tune in. UFC on Fuel 8, going to be awesome. Yeah, and the, the main event, you got Stan and Silva. You know somebody's getting knocked out. Yeah, in Japan, it's going to be so much fun. Yeah, and, and main event, just to speed this up, we got to get to Heidi's hit list. I'm going Stan. If I had some money, I'd throw it on Vanderlei. Return to light heavyweight division. Return to Japan. I'd throw some fun burn money on Vanderlei, but my, my smart money, I have to say, gun to the head, I'm picking Stan. Yeah, i got to pick Brian Stan. Vanderlei Silva going back to Japan to go out in a blaze of glory. In a perfect world, Vanderlei Silva steps in the middle of the ring, Eric Octagon, and knocks out Brian Stan in a blaze of glory. In all probable reality, Stan, I think, squeaks out a decision win, kind of controls Vanderlei the whole way through as a step ahead. You heard it here. Beautiful. Well, we're running out of time. we got to quickly get to the inside scoop, the latest and greatest, all our news. It's time for Heidi's Hit List. Ready for MMA news? It's time for Heidi's Hit List. <laughs> All right, guys, so Western Australia has now passed a ban on MMA. That'll keep some contests out of the area. The only, I think, area left on Australia that still approves MMA is Southern Australia. Uh, Lorenzo Fertitta on the flip side, New York MMA. It looks like this is finally the year that we're going to push it through. Uh, And if it does, it seems the big rumor going around, John Jones, Anderson Silva super fight. It is only rumored, but it is being speculated that that may happen at Madison Square Garden. Also, some fight signings this week. Obviously, I'm sure you all heard by now that Demetrius Johnson, UFC flyweight champ, is out at the tough finale against John Moraga. Instead, we get Uriah Faber and Scott Jorgensen. That's going to be a real fun fight. That's at the tough 17 finale, April 13th, and it is finally decided that it will happen at the Mandalay Bay. Also, UFC 160, May 25th at the MGM. Mike Pyle and Gunnar Nelson. Those guys, those guys are going to throw. It's going to be a good, uh, I guess, test for both of them to see where they're at in the welterweight division. And then we also have at UFC 160, uh, Jeremy Stevens dropping to featherweight to fight Esteban Payan. And on June 15th, UFC event to be announced. Jake Shields comes back to welterweight and he'll face Strikeforce's own Tyron Woodley. 
I know he's in the UFC zone now, but you know, he made that big impact and guy is uh, looking good. Also, Gustafsson and Musasi in Sweden, that's been decided to be a five round event for the main event there. Awesome. Cool. That's love it. it. Yeah. Love it. I love love it. the five round events. Love the main event. Love that fight, Gustafsson and, and Musasi. Musasi finally in the UFC. I am stoked. Yeah, and all of them. Pyle and Gunnar Nelson. That's a real interesting Sick fight. Sick fight. You know, Pyle's been on a tear, knocking people out, you know, left and right for the first time in his career, back to back to back. And Gunnar Nelson, we, you know, we saw him a few weeks ago. We know what he's capable of. Good test to see where people are at in the 170 division. Yeah, I'm excited. And I love I love the Woodley and Shields fight. I'm not uh uh, I think stylistically, you know, I'm excited to see Woodley face another wrestler where he can use his rest of wrestling defensively and show off his striking skills that we saw against, you know, unfortunately against our boy Jay. Yeah, and what I really like is I like this Uriah Faber scott Jorgensen fight. This is a really good fight, and it's got such an interesting background. They're best friends from back in the day. He, Uriah is the reason Scott ever started fighting. I love it. Well, we want to thank Mike Dolce for co-hosting and Dennis Bermudez for the phone interview. Remember, get all your MMA news from MMAFightCorner.com. Follow us on Facebook and on Twitter at Fight Corner. And follow all of us at Twitter, Joey V MMA, Billy Mira MMA, MMA Billy Mira, Filthy Divine. Heidi F at Heidi Fang, the Dolce Diet. Thank you for listening. Be sure to tune in Tuesday from 6 to 7. It's like going to college for your MMA knowledge. The MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920.